I'm removing them. Bonjour, bonjour, fragrance lovers. This is Clémence. I talk about fragrance and welcome back. In today's video, we're talking a little bit about our perfumer. You know how much I love to talk about perfumer. If you're looking for like video specific on perfumer, I've got a, my playlist that is called Fragrance Academy. We're gonna talk quickly about 10 perfumers. There won't be Jacques Paul, Olivier Paul, Jean-Claude Elena, Olivier Cresp, Alberto Marias, and Francis Cardian, and Cécile Zarocan because they have already their own little video guys i need you if you want me to do a, a video only about one uh, perfumer tell me the name in the comment and i will definitely do it because i really want to do more of this video anyway let's go okay number one amelie bourgeois She's created some of my favorite creations, like, for example, lots of creations from my favorite brand, which is L'Orchestre Parfum. Cuir Cora, a favorite of my mom. Uh, Ensemble Asaxada, I love this one at the moment. Flamenco Neroli, Té d'Arbuca, Rouge Assassin by Jovois, Majestic Jardin uh, from uh, Alexandre I just love this one. It's like cherry, tobacco, nargile like powdery trail, very intoxicating. But to tell you a little bit about the woman, she's done cosmetology studies. So apparently she did better than me because I was really crap in cosmetology, I have to say. One day the teacher like got, got back my, my copy, like, you know, my, my exam. And I had like a 0.4 something, like it's really bad. <laughs> she was really upset. And me, I, I just laughed. I was like, <laughs> and she was like, do you think it's funny? <laughs> For my defense, I was a very good student. I had really good grade, except cosmetology. <laughs> but uh, bad behavior, Clemence, okay, bad behavior. After cosmetology studies, she uh, went to 5e sens. 5e uh, sens is a bit like uh, Givaudan, Firmanish. It's like those kind of group that uh, have multiple perfumers. They, they are like a bank of ingredients. Perfumery, a company if you prefer, a studio. A few years back, she created Flair, which is her own independent studio. So she's independent. But you can see more and more independent perfumers nowadays. Uh, it used to not really be the case. They would always be under some someone uh, you know group next one is ow <sighs> ville germain fragrance on my feet the next one is rodrigo flores roux and i'm so happy because i actually met the guy last week <laughs> met him because uh, he's done the fragrance of a brand that i didn't know before i think that they're, they're just gonna be launched in the uk now and it's ville germain the brand has been created by francisco gratagos i will actually like present you more of the fragrance soon if i would describe rodrigo in one one after seeing him he's like a talkative fun and uh, very down to us. My favorite creation from Rodrigo are actually Sydney Rock Pool from Arkist. I love this for summer. Clinique Happy, Fougère Royale by Oubigan, Dark Rebel, John Varvatos, of course. Jasmin Rouge and Neroli Portofino from Tom Ford. So the guy was born in Mexico City. And he's actually half French. He studied biology. He said to me uh, during the uh, interview that uh, he, he was also a botanist. And uh, that, I think that's really interesting to see uh, uh, that for a perfumer because it's really linked. You know. He moved to France at his 20s and uh, studied in the uh, famous uh, perfumery school, Izipka. The years he, he's been like the senior, uh, a senior perfumer at G. Givaudan and he's actually the vice uh, president of Givaudan. He's done an internship with Jean-Claude Elena, one of my favorite perfumers. He's got more of 30 years of experience. So for me, like Rodrigo is like a monument of perfumery. Nowadays, he lives in Manhattan. So for him, like to come to London, I was like, Ooh. and after talking with him as well, he's like very rich composition and also multi-layered. So of course the fragrance is layered uh, by its composition, you know, the, the olfactive pyramid, but it's also like sometimes, you know, there's some fragrance that have composition that are really developing with the time and very uh, faceted, multifaceted, multi-layered, we call it. So once you smell the fragrance, you really have to wait uh, to see how it develops. It's really like, a, for me, a, a work of art. It's very modern, what is created, definitely, but there's always like something like, classic in there passionate about like vintage uh, perfumery so and i know that he enjoyed that too so it's really really nice to see and some of his new creation with ville germain i could really smell it uh, that classic touch and just love it next one is nathalie lorson so monument again of perfumery of bentley for men intense the gentleman from givenchy 
encre noire, Lalique, also Oriana, Black Opium, Violet Parfum, I've done a video on them, um, you've got Sketch and you've got Compliment that she created, I love them, Compliment is going to be nice for spring, Musicology and uh, Fragrances, she actually created the, the three of those, so Fly Me To The Hood, Close To Midnight and Sun Goddess, uh, I have to say this is one of the fragrances I wear the most at the moment, especially Fly Me To The Hood, I'm absolutely in love from this fragrance, the hood with a slightly brown sugar touch, it's so comforting, Nathalie, she actually grew up in grass, like a lot of perfumers, a cradle of perfumery, it's where you pick the most amazing ingredient. One of the first memory of uh, fragrance is actually walking in the field of Mimosa. I would have loved to have the same uh, memories. <laughs> her dad was a chemist and he worked for the fragrance band Roux. So it's nice to see that it's really a family thing to be a perfumer and we're going to see that with more of the perfumer. It's, it's a family thing, it's an heritage. She was really a pioneer in the 80s because in the 80s in the perfumery, uh, let's face it, there was no women. Her signature is really like round ingredient, a sensual composition. So it's really difficult, let me tell you, to see the signature of a perfumer into designer fragrance because the brief for designer fragrance is so strong. You can't tell, like they, they do no touch from the perfumer, they just, they just do what, what they be asked for. Niche fragrances leave a bit more uh, the perfumer express themselves and the creation. So this is where you can see uh, the signature of someone. And she actually said that, that um, nowadays she finds it's very stimulating for her work to have more niche brands because for her it's more innovation and more creativity. She can sometimes work on more than 10 fragrances at the same time. Wow! Next one is Calis Becker. Some of a composition, mainly some Killian. Back to Black, Flower of Immortality, Intoxicated, Love by Killian, Moonlight in Heaven. I love Moonlight in Heaven. I really want it for this summer. J'adore, <laughs> voilà. And Terre de Lumière. Guys, if you don't know Terre de Lumière from L'Occitane, I absolutely love it. It's like um, a pepperish, very solar fragrance. I, I just love it. Mandarino di Abalfi from Tom Ford. So she worked for Givaudan. I've read an interview of Calice where she was talking about her mom and her inspiration in her life. Her mom like was um, making her smell an eau de cologne and she, she asked her mom, oh, mommy, like, uh, how come the flowers are inside the bottle of, perf of cologne? Which is very cute. You know, and her mom told her, like, you, you will know uh, later on, which really makes sense for her. I love the fact that she said that a fragrance is at the same time visual, tactile, and auditive. To appreciate fragrances, she said that you need to learn how to appreciate beautiful things. There's a lot of people talking about dupe, talking about batch, talking about longevity, performance. And this, for me, okay, it's important when you buy a fragrance, but it's... It's really killing the heart. Like for me, like smelling a fragrance is like smelling a, uh, tasting a good wine. At the beginning, you don't really like the, the beautiful thing, but the more uh, you educate yourself on that, the more you appreciate it. So uh, for me, that makes a lot of sense. This one is Dominique Ropion. So I think that's one of the person I definitely need to do an episode. He's created some of my favorite fragrance, which is Burberry London. This is my ultimate go-to. Euphoria, Calvin Klein, Carnal Flower, Frédéric Mal. Portrait of a Lady, L'Interdit, Givenchy, Kenzo Jungle, Mutiny from Maison Margiela. I love this one. Alien, La Nuit de l'Homme, and Why from Yves Saint Laurent. So this is like a little échantillon of what he created. Ropion is a perfectionist. He's a true inventor of fragrances. And you can see it like with creation, like Carnal Flowers and Portrait of a Lady. He likes to take the risk and he loves to balance excessive dose of powerful ingredients. Again, a perfumer, by the way, that was trained in grass. For example, the use of tuberose. Uh, Carnal Flower is like a, a very dirty, earthy uh, tuberose and very potent. Uh, tuberose is a very difficult uh, ingredient to work with. Once you put tuberose in the flacon, like he, he remove all the scent, uh, all the scent that you have next to him because it's a very strong ingredient and i feel like with his creation he was not scared of actually going to the max with those ingredients take the most of them there you go that's my fragrance my next one is ernest beau so what is the most famous fragrance in the world new number five by chanel there since 1921 and probably the most worn fragrance ever ernest beau is a big part of actually a french perfumery history 1881 to 1961 
He's Russian, but he's born French. He created a lot of fragrance for uh, a lot of important person. He created, for example, Bouquet de Napoléon, which is a floral eau de Cologne, the emperor of France, you know, back in the days. <laughs> also created fragrances for the Romanov family dynasty. Most famous fragrance are definitely the one he created in collaboration with Chanel. He actually was introduced to uh, Mademoiselle Chanel because she had a lover back in the time and he was called the Grand Duc uh, Dimitri. Uh, he met them met and that's where uh, the collaboration started like Bois des Îles number 22 number 5 de toilette and de parfum um, Gardenia uh, how modern is this fragrance Gardenia like honestly is still one of my favorite wedding life fragrance I, I don't know like for me like when when I was fragrance expert at Chanel I was like this is the wedding fragrances Cuir de Russie and also the ancestor of Bleu de Chanel which was back in the time called 1940 Bleu de Chanel next one is Christine Nagel the flash from Jimmy Choo a lot of Hermes fragrance like Twilly Terre d'Hermes uh, Intense H24 Gallo Eau de Rhubarbe I love this fragrance Jardin sur la Lagune A lot of fragrances from Joe Malone English Pier and Fresia Wood and Bergamot Wood Sage and Sisal I love this This is the best marine smell I ever smell um, For her by Narciso Rodriguez And she is now the in-house perfumer of Hermès Since 2016 So she took the place of Jean-Claude Elleda She was born in 59 And she's from Switzerland She studied medicine and also chemistry She also said that she found it hard To make a place uh, into the perfumery well because this was a world that was dominated by men. She said her biggest inspiration was Alberto Morillas, Dominique Ropion, but also Germaine Sellier. Let's talk about Germaine actually. One of the first perfumer, women perfumer, if it's not the first. She did a lot of creation for Pierre Balmain back in the time. Uh, Pierre Balmain in the twenties, it was like uh, Chanel nowadays. Hein. You don't wear a Pierre Balmain, you're totally out. <laughs> you has been. Voilà. Jolie madame, uh, Monsieur Balmain. And also Van Vert. And Van Vert is a very important fragrance into uh, the perfumery because Van Vert was the first green fragrance ever. It's full of galbanum. So she was born in 1909 and she died in 1976. She was from Bordeaux and she also studied chemistry. Can you imagine like for some women nowadays it's difficult to be in, in the perfumery uh, system as a woman. So I can imagine at, at her time, it must have been quite something. Next one is Jacques Cavalier. Uh, eau parfumée au thé blanc, I love Midnight Poison. Uh, the classic from Jean-Paul Gaultier. A lot of Louis Vuitton fragrances. From what I remember, I really enjoy Nuit de Feu. A lot of fragrance from Replica, Maison Margiela, uh, Beach Wall, Coffee Break, Noir de Noir from Tom Ford, Rive Gauche, Rive Gauche pour Homme uh, from YSL. So a lot of fragrances as you can see. Still work I think uh, for Firmenich and especially for uh, Louis Vuitton LVMH group. Again, uh, this man was born in Grasse. He stated that the ingredients that are the most important for a perfumer are rose, agarwood, so wood, um, jasmine and orange flower so agree uh, especially for rose and jasmine like you don't do a fragrance without those two he started to work in in grass factories at the age of 10. his family was into fragrance so he, he's been taught quite early uh, to create fragrance about the ingredient and everything he really values as he said like natural ingredient but Funny uh, enough that his most famous creation were actually like a uh, one that included heavy uh, synthetic notes. Methyl benzoxyxepinone. I don't know if I said that correctly, but that was hard. This molecule is more commonly called watermelon ketone. It smells airy, uh, fizzy, and also like a bit like a melon smell. The sea breeze, like this marine vibe. Including those molecules into Aquadigio or Lodice. Really kind of the first time that you can see marine fragrance, like this introduction of marine scent into most popular creation. Number 10, Roger Dove. Talking about iconic, again, it's someone that I could definitely do a video on. Oh my God, can you imagine I could do a video on Roja and have an interview with him? I'm dreaming of that. So I don't know if it's exactly him, but I know he commented on one on some of my videos. Uh, Roger, if you see this video, I would really love to interview you on my channel. That would be such an honor. Thank you. <laughs> That's my message. I love. 
51. It's one of my favorite essence de parfum. It's so beautiful, lingerie, so luxurious. I love Elysium for men. I love Amber Wood. I think it's incredible, a rich ingredient. I do love uh, Oceania, a midsummer dream. I love them. Um, and there's one on my wish list, which is Sweetie Wood. I need I need this fragrance, it's amazing guys. If you never smell this, honestly, it's one of the most gourmand fragrances I ever smelled. The richness of this composition is incredible. The British perfumer and he started his career uh, in 1981 because he actually worked for the house of Guerlain. So he spent 20 years into Guerlain. So he had a lot of time to have experience and know the industry and everything over there. I read that before that he used to write to a classic French perfumer to get info and experience and to uh, fragrances, which is, which is quite funny. Like the guy was really determined was really on it, you know. But he was at the training and public relation department and it was a really interesting fact. He was actually the first non-Guerlain uh, member of the family to be given the role of global ambassador of the brand. Well done. He used to be called the professor of parfum. I don't know if that's true, but I read somewhere that his hometown is, home, hometown is Brighton. It's really nice. I love this city. I love it. Let me know again in the comments which perfume you would like to see a full review, a full video. Thank you so much for watching the video. I will see you very soon. Bye now. Je t'emmène dans mon paradis bleu.